Hi, this is uh, Coach Allen, SBG NorCal, and your coaching tip for this week is what we're going to cover is aliveness, and I'm going to use an example how a slipping drill um, can be made most efficient by making sure that you're using the principles of aliveness. So first I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what aliveness isn't. So I'm going to have uh, one of our coaches, uh, there he is, Junior, come on out here. So in slipping punches, right, learning to move your head in the correct direction, it's fundamental that when he's trying to put his chin, my, his glove on my chin, I'm gonna move my head out of the way. But absent real aliveness, I can perform this drill like I am right now with my eyes closed and have the same rate of success because there's no timing involved in that. So that's the first thing you need to make sure that a drill is alive, is that first component of timing has to be there, meaning that I can't do the drill with my eyes closed. So uh, the trainer, the helper, has to help me, the learner, by breaking up the timing with, that they use to throw that punch. So timing, motion, movement, that's where the partner, the partners are moving around the mat. We're going to add that element later in the drills. You'll see that. But then also the energy. And that is, uh, let me get Fred back out here again. And that is that he's really trying to put his glove on my face, right? And he's not hanging his hand out there. But you notice that it doesn't hurt, right? So he doesn't need to be trying to knock my block off for me to be practicing with aliveness. But he does have to be trying to touch my face with his glove. Thank you. Okay? So... Let's uh, get our first group out here and drill this up. Bring a hoop. Got two pairs. So, trainer, you got your foot in the in the uh, hoop. Let's go ahead and bring these a little closer together. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and you just watch out for each other. So, we're just going to train the jab, right? Just going to train the jab. And remember the fundamental skill is when the jab comes, I want to move my face to the outside. If I make the mistake of going to the inside, I'm just going to duck and bring my head back out. Okay? So, timing and energy. You've got to try to touch him with the glove, and the timing has to be broken up so that they have to actually see the punch to know what to do. Okay? Let's try that. Don't switch roles till I say. You can move a bit. Yeah, move around a little bit. Good. Try to focus on moving your head to the correct side. If you make a mistake, you can fix it. Good. And switch rolls. That's how we slip the jab. Let's uh, uh, switch up our training partners for a minute. Uh, Mitchell, I'll have you step off. Ethan, come on in here. And now we're going to work the same thing, but with the cross. Okay, with the cross. Ethan, why don't you go with Junior, Christian, and uh, Santos. You guys will be partnered up. So you're going to be the, the learner first. That means Junior's got his foot in there. Okay, then when I say switch roles, and you put your, uh, and I prefer you usually have the back foot. Back foot. Okay? So we're working the cross, that backhand. So you want to put your head to the outside. So you're going to move around, break up the timing, touch gloves, train. Eyes open, move around a little bit, Ethan. Where do you have to go if your head's on the wrong side? Where do you have to go? Rise up on him. Switch rolls. So you can aim. Why don't you go down on one knee? So you don't get to do as much footwork. You have to focus on the head. So your 
cross. All right, try to put that glove on him, Ethan. Step out there and put that glove on him. Let me see you hit him right now. Don't move. Okay, so you can do it. So you got to move. Good. And time. Okay. So, forgetting guys. So you can see, right, that once people can handle that pressure of one punch that is the jab or one punch that is the cross, then we can add more resistance. And what resistance means, which comes from uh, basically the I method in the isolation drill, is not how hard do I get to hit him, coach? It's, oh, you can throw a jab or a cross. A jab or a cross, okay? So let's do this. Uh, Santos, let me have you step out. Mitchell, come on back in. And let's have uh, Ethan and Christian work together. So this time the trainer, you can throw a jab or a cross, but just single punches, okay? One or the other, and you gotta try to put your head to the correct side, okay? Go. Eyes up. Good, try to keep your eyes on him. Rolls. Can you put your glove on him? It's kind of hard to reach his head, huh? Yeah. It's okay. Do your best. That's right. Aim for his face. You know you're too far. Yeah. He's too tall for you. Time. step out on this one, Ethan, and Santos will get you back in. So now that we've covered how to slip the punch, left or right, what we're going to start doing is letting the learner learn how to add a counter, okay? So I won't go into a details about what's a good counter, what's a bad counter, but what I'll say is that if, when you're trying to learn to, to slip and counter, the best thing to learn to counter with is your favorite technique. In other words, if I'm real confident using my cross, it doesn't mean I should teach you, well, when he throws this, you throw a cross. Well, it's like, coach, I really prefer a hook. I'm good with the hook. That's your individuality. So you've got to work that way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to work uh, my front hand. So when he throws his jab, right, I'm going down to his body. When he throws, when he throws his uh, cross, I'm going to step out and go to his body this way. So those are the two counters I'm going to work on. But you can have your own. It doesn't have to necessarily have to be the same punch. I use my lead hand for both. You can experiment. But the idea being is that I want to try to get my head in the right position and try to punch him as close in timing as possible. In other words, if I slip and he brings his hand back and then I try to punch him, that's a whole different set of timing. Not necessarily so efficient. So you're looking for the thing you can do as quickly as possible. Okay, so grab your first partner. Don't switch roles. And train. And you may not, shouldn't be able to counter every punch, right? You're throwing left, you're throwing jabs sometimes, you're throwing right sometimes. Movement. Controls. And time. Uh, let's have Christian out. Ethan, come on in. So, Ethan, you're going to be the learner this time. So you can use punches or kicks. So this time, guys, uh, what I want you to do, though, is gauge your learner's success rate. 
In other words, if they are ca able to counter every time you throw a punch, then you're not putting enough res giving them enough resistance. Right? They shouldn't be able to succeed. Now we're doing this a second time, third round, fourth round. If they're succeeding every single time you throw a punch, you probably need to step it up a little bit. Okay? All right, ready? And train. That's it. Move around, Ethan. Eyes up. Keep your eyes up. Get your head out of the way, Ethan. Out boy. Okay, I want to see you punch him back as quick as possible. There you go. Up. Yeah. And time. Switch rolls. Go ahead and work your counters too, Junior. Yep, keep going, keep punching him. Just because he doesn't succeed doesn't mean you stop, right? <laughs> and time. Okay. So, last phase of this, thank you, Ethan, let's bring that up. Christian back in. Last phase of this is going to be you can move anywhere in the square. Okay? So one person is going to be the trainer. That is, they're throwing straight jabs or crosses, not mixing it up a bunch. Like, you know, just show them some stuff. Um, and both people can move freely in the square. And the learner, you're going to work to try to counter. Okay, you're going to work to try to counter, slip and counter. So, and remember, the, the point of slipping is if Fred goes to punch me here, I want to try to hit him back as soon as possible. Right? That's our goal. It's not going to happen. But, you know, I mean, just doing this and then punching back, you know, timing is different, it's safe, it works. But what we're, our goal today is to try to slip and hit as soon as possible after that slip. Okay? Make a decision. Who's the trainer and who's the learner? So this is isolation. Don't switch roles. Stay in the square. Train. Make sure you're aiming. If you're the, the trainer, you've got to aim, right? That's the energy. You've got to try to put your glove on their face. You've got to try to bring your hand back. Switch rolls. Resistance. We're going to up the resistance because the trainer, you can throw two punches. You can throw two punches. So it's not just a jab or a cross, but you can throw a cross jab, you can throw a jab cross like that. Okay? So you can see that by changing the type of, of uh, movement we give the trainer, that's what ups the resistance. Okay? Ready? Make a decision. Who's trainer? And start. So remember, you can throw one or two. One or two. Try to put that glove on him, Christian. Yeah. Where's your counters, uh, Mitchell? Try to counter. Don't, don't give it to him. Don't give it to him, Christian. Ones and twos. Switch rolls. Ones and twos. Throw some two punch. And 
time. Good job, guys. So, come on in back out, Ethan. So, stay in here. So, that's the key thing that, you know, one of the things I wanted to point out is that as the coach, your decision in terms of when do I change the drill is based on the athlete's success. In other words, if uh, I'm the learner here, right, and imagine Fred's the, uh, uh, my, the trainer in this particular drill, and he's trying to, he could throw a jabber across, and what the coach has seen is this, right? The guy's looking down, you know, he's turning away. Well, if, if I can't handle just the jab correctly, that is keeping my eyes on my opponent, keeping my guard up, and I'm not turning away, it's not time for the coach to say, okay, this time throw the jab or the cross, right? It's like going into the gym and wanting to lift weights and you fail trying to bench 200 and you say, well, let's put some more plates on. It's like, no, it's not going to work. So, so aliveness, timing, energy, and, and mo movement, motion, and then apply the I method where you use progressive resistance, which means not how hard do I get to hit him, coach, but what type of resistance. So this is SBG NorCal. And remember, it's SBG. What's going to be? It'll You'll be, be okay. okay. Thank you.